President, Ms. Metzola, you were the first top European politician to visit Ukraine after the war began. How did you find President Zelensky? How is he standing up to the enormous pressure and what was the atmosphere during your visit? Well, it was a difficult decision to take, but one that I felt I had to uh, take uh, upon the invitation of the President of the Ukrainian Parliament uh, to address an extraordinary session. It was amazing to see a parliament that was alive, full uh, of political representatives that are fighting with a united spirit and such courage and resilience for a country that is proud uh, and that is um, really uh, declaring and fighting and combating the let's say, unacceptability uh, of this brutal uh, invasion that was unprovoked and completely uh, unnecessary. Uh, I, uh, I was there a few hours before we saw uh, the photos of the atrocities in Bucha, um, but also in the aftermath of what has happened in Mariupol and also around Kiev over the last few weeks. In the eyes of President uh, Zelensky, I saw courage, I saw spiritedness, I saw resilience, but I also saw the, the face of a leader that would like more from the European Union, from leaders, and that is why I went there in order to talk face-to-face uh, -face with him to see how myself as leader of the European Parliament, but also all of us as the European Union can continue to help. The response was, we need more help more urgently, we need more arms, we need more military help, financial help and logistical help. So that is my next question, of course. Does the European Union do enough? You're saying, no, we, we should do much more. Uh, how can this be brought about? If we look at the next sanctions package, for instance, it seems weakish. It's uh, more a whimper than a bang. Uh, so on that regard, uh, it seems there's not enough unity. But with giving arms, giving money and, and giving more factual help, uh, you think that could be done? Uh, I uh, am in a parliament where a huge amount of members, unprecedented unity, in fact, among the members that have pushed from day one um, uh, to steps that I thought this parliament would never achieve, that welcoming the candidate status of Ukraine uh, as, a, as, a, as a candidate country of the European Union, um, calling for a, a quick uh, removal of uh, Russia from the SWIFT system, going for the first and second package of sanctions and financial assistance that were voted on at lightning speed. We have seen unprecedented unity also among the member states and the leaders and the European Union has really come to action uh, in terms of sending weapons, in terms of allocating financial assistance. I think that we need to go much further still. I think these days are crucial. This week is crucial in order to make sure that the Ukrainians continue to have the possibility to fight. They are fighting not only for their country, they are fighting for Europe. And therefore, when they ask for more equipment, we need to be ready to give them more equipment. When they ask for um, a quicker, let's say, um, uh, possibility to access funding, we should be able to give them that. And when they ask for the strongest of political messaging that we do not want to remain dependent on Russian oil, coal, but also gas, then we need to be ready to say that. Different countries have different realities, but the one thing that Putin will try to exploit is any potential divisions between the member states. So far, unity has been key. That's my appeal this week. This parliament is extremely strong on that. We need to continue going further. This is not a normal negotiation when you have two equals at a, at a table. This is, these are negotiations that you can talk about one party having pointing a gun at another party's head. This is not something that is acceptable to us. What we want to see is a free Ukraine and what we want to see that Russia does not commit war again in this continent. I am one of those generations that did not grow up with war in this continent. I would never have dreamt of a war in Europe. But we are living a war and our decisions these few days will be testament to our courage to make sure our children will not live through war again. You talked about uh, that this concerns not only Ukraine. They're fighting for their own survival, of course, but they're fighting for all of us in a sense. Many observers feel that. Uh, do you think Europe really has to rethink its reality? Do we really have to come to a new appraisal of fundament fundamentals? Uh, uh, that is more defense, uh, quicker reactions, a more 
offensively political stance, uh, not offensive in the sense of warlike, of course, but uh, politically going further, fighting for democracy more openly. Uh, absolutely. We have seen this political will over the past few weeks that where there is that will, we act more efficiently, more effectively uh, and with immediate, let's say, coherence between the different institutions, which is important not only for Ukraine, but also for our citizens to see that the European Union is capable of acting. We saw during the COVID pandemic, the previous crisis, so to speak, although it's not over, but now we have to see it now at war. But we also need to see it when we're going to combat the next imminent um, a challenge that we have, which is food shortages and food security for our citizens and the people uh, also in our neighbouring uh, countries. What I think uh, we need to also see is that this momentum that we have, this political will that we've managed to bring together, in the next few weeks we're also going to be discussing the conclusions of the Conference on the Future of Europe. Right in the middle of that has to be our strategic autonomy. It's not just a buzzword, it's the possibility that Europe like when we saw what happened with Afghanistan, we can no longer rely on other parts of the world to fight for freedom and democracy. It is also up to us, if not only up to us. At the moment, there is a war on our continent. We need to have all the arsenal, if I can use that word, whether it's political, economical or military, in order to have tools in our hands to fight it. What I said before uh, the, the uh, Verhofna Rada, the Ukrainian parliament last Friday, was that the Ukrainians are fighting for the fundamental values that we share. They are fighting for justice. They are fighting for rule of law. We now have to fight to make sure that those atrocities will never go unpunished and will never be forgotten. It is these fundamentals that bring us together in this House, in this Parliament, with all the European institutions, in our capitals, because we have our citizens who are asking us to do more. They have opened their hearts, they have opened their homes. It's our responsibility now to make sure that this never happens again, or if this had to happen again, we'd be better prepared. President, thank you very much. Thank you.